Alright guys, you probably guessed it, it's another ambulance episode. Well, what are we doing today? Well, there's a bunch of niggly little things we need to do. For a start, we're going to change the interior light in the front with an LED, or a, an LED array. And uh, we're going to change that swiveling hitch on the back to a fixed pintle ball, so that somebody doesn't break their neck, and so that I can take toe balls. We also need to go down to the PTO winch and tighten up some grub screws on the drive shaft. And Christmas and New Year's are long gone, so it's time we got this stuff off. And it's sideburns up here as well. And uh, there's a few other things we need to do. We need to do oil change and lots of fluids. Um, and I've got to find oil filters that are hard to find where I am. So, I think we're going to start with this guy first. Alright, so for the sake of convenience, I've already removed the glass cover, which is this here, and the little chrome shroud. I'm going to take them inside and give them a clean up before I put them back on. But I'm going to take this little guy out and remove him. Now if there's one thing I'm good at is leaving interior lights on. So that's why I've taken the time to get this little guy, which I can't do one handed. So this guy, I'm hoping I picked the right size, I did. And this is a J-Car unit. It's a response brand, CAN bus compatible. I'm pretty sure that just means they put a resistor in there, <laughs> which could increase its power usage, ironically. Anyway, um, we'll rotate this round till we get it in and twist. Now I'm gonna go to the other side to turn it on. Right, now, for those of you who don't own one of these Land Rovers, the interior light switch is here, and it can be left on, and that is unwholesomely bright and blinding from here. So definitely going to need that filter. So, I guess what we're going to do is dump the screws all over the place here and lose them, and we'll take these two guys inside, and we'll give them a good wash, and see how they look, because there's been years of dirt in there. It may also be that that bracket needs a bit of a bend and an adjustment, um, but we'll get to that. We'll wash these first. All right, well, I've got the camera in the rifle holder here, so you get a different look. But uh, the chrome is a little shinier. The glass is a bit cleaner. It looks pretty nice. Uh, whether we can get this on to position now. Actually, that looks like that's going to go on okay. If we don't fall off. Um, we have a screw here. Let's see if we... that's what I was worried about. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come around the other side to do this. So yeah the problem with glass fittings um, that one chipped just a tiny bit so I really can't afford to do that again. So we need to get this on properly the first time. glass fitting is on. Let's turn it on. Well that is considerably brighter than the other one. It's actually going to be good. I might actually be able to see something in here. Um, and for the record I had to sit in the middle where there's no seat to do it and don't mind the junk. I left a bottle of um, coffee milk in here yesterday and it was like 39 degrees Celsius. It fermented and spewed all over everything including my tool bag so I've emptied my tools on the floor while the tool bag is on the clothesline drying. All right, let's see what we can do about trailer hitch. All right, we're around at the back and we have a few things here. We've got our new hitch. I've got a uh, rattle gun here and a bunch of sockets. Importantly, this is a 27 mil socket. That'll become important in a minute. Um, but here's what we're gonna do here. Our old hitch, whilst very robust and very practical with grease nipples and everything, uh, it spins. Now, crucially, both the military trailer and the custom trailer I've got have a spinning ring, which means this can spin like this, have all the weight sitting on the latch here. We don't want that. Despite all the efforts they've gone to to make it very robust here, we don't want it bouncing up and down. Secondly, if somebody gets out of here and they stand on this, it's really only a matter of time till somebody does it in the middle of the night. They will break their ankles or worse. 
We seriously don't want that. We also want the ability to take things with a tow ball. So we have this combination hitch that will do both and it's fixed, solves all the problems. So the job is getting this guy out. And so if we have a look underneath here, and I'll lay on the grass, I can see there's four bolts that are easy to get to. In the 4x4, these bolts can only go through to the first layer, and this wiring loom runs inside that beam. Um, I actually ended up squashing that loom and causing a short that I had to later fix. Anyway, I could do this with a spanner or a, or a ratchet spanner, we'll be here all night. I'm going to wind the spare tie down on the winch, which is where that 27mm socket comes from, and um, then we'll get into it with the rattle gun. just in the process of shifting the spare tire here and um, I actually broke my tripod so field repair now um oh oh dear all right there's a shroud in the way of that bolt that is actually gonna I can get these two bottom ones but these top two are gonna be a problem um, and that's part of the body that's glued on. They're going to be spanner jobs, those ones. If I can at least get these two out, and then I can probably loosen those other two from the outside. Let's find a socket that fits. What are we looking here? We're looking probably a 19 mil. That fits nice and snug. Do that that and let's see if we can get these off I'm gonna need an extension bar I'll go find one all right turns out I don't have an extension bar long enough so it's gonna be ratchet time in a minute but I'm gonna try and attack it from the outside and see if I can at least get these guys loose and that uh, that might help it so I'm gonna do that off camera I'm kind of chasing the, uh, the sunset here because uh, I'm trying to do this while it's cool so I'm going to try and make the best of my time here and not yak so much while the sun's going down. We'll be back as soon as I've done some of this. All right. Old hitch is off. And uh, we're not going to use the supplied bolt kit. Largely because the supplied bolt kit is way too short. We need big long ones. Next question is going to be, will these fit the holes? They will. Super awesome. It's super awesome. All right, now, can we get this guy in the hole? What have we got? That one won't go all the way in for some reason. Try a different one. We'll give that one a bit of a rattle with a rattle gun in a minute. These can be in here loose. Crucially, there's one important thing I want to check before I go to the problems of, or the trouble of bolting the whole thing in. Pull that. I thought that might happen. Are we all the way on yet? <sighs> Yay. So, the um, tower gate is snagging right about here, so the option to modify this would involve considerably structurally weakening it. So, um, I do recall there is a way to fix these in position and just involves drilling a pin into them. Um, you know what, I might refrain from putting this on here just yet until I actually find out how easy that is to modify so keep all our nuts and bolts together so we don't lose them and then we'll come back and uh, sort this out probably tomorrow this is not enough light in the day today to uh, modify this guy uh, 
Okay, let's turn some lights on here. Well, as you might have guessed, it's night time. And I've been doing some homework. So this hitch here, this bit here is where two little forks are supposed to drop across this part of it to lock it in position. Um, I'm going to see if I can engineer something to do that or find one. Otherwise, I might just whack a hole through there. Anyway, not the end of the world at the moment that can sit on hold. There's a couple of things we need to do. You know, I've been busy in the workshop and I have modified a couple of these little globes here. These are 12 volt globes. I've whacked a 390 ohm resistor in the base to slow them down a little bit so I can run them on 24 volts. And because these little map lights here that use the BA9S globes are occasionally wired in reverse polarized form, I've done one of each polarity and we'll see which works. But before we do that, we're going to check what our interior light looks like at night. All right, there's a little bit of light coming through the back window here, but let's have a look. Well, that interior light is blindingly bright, but it's certainly going to make life a little easier in here. And I realize I have another map light here, but that's a 12 volt one, so that will be easy to fix. Anyway, let's get these globes in. All right, so don't mind me getting a little creative with the camera angle here, but we can see the very warm color, very low color temperature of these uh, globes. And I realize I've forgotten my Leatherman. I'll have to use a screwdriver, which I've also forgotten one moment. Okay, we have screwdrivers. All right, so from here, we're gonna pull the lens out and uh, gonna pull our globe out if I have enough grip to do this. There's a little BA9S globe. And let's try a standard wide LED. Let's have a look. Nope. Let's try our reverse polarized one, which I also can't grip. All right, that one works. So they are reverse polarized. So I need to go and make another one of these. And while I'm in there, I can wash these lenses. All right, we're fresh out of the workshop. Now I've got two of these globes and I'm not sure which one was which now. One's a standard one. And this is one I've modified. It's got the most shiny silicon and it's got a bit of glue on it. So this will be the reverse polarity one. Anyway, we'll do that in a second. I've been out and washed the filters. And they look very nice. So let's or lenses, whichever you want to call these things. Diffusers are probably the correct word. There we go. That's a nice bit of white light there. We'll check that in a minute with the main lights turned off, but let's go over the other side. All right, we have this one in. Let's see if this works. That does. I did obviously got the right one. So I am going to leave this run for a little bit just to make sure they don't completely cook. I think this should be right. All right, let's turn the main lights off and see how bright they are. All right, yep, interior light. Well, there's a few funny little spots here because of the faceted nature of the light, um, but certainly enough that, just to give enough to see what you're doing without waking everybody up. Let's turn the other one on over the other side. Yep, and there's certainly enough light to do things. Let's have a look here. Yep. I could certainly live with that. That's good, and it certainly drops our power usage way down too. Let's have a look what our power usage is doing, being as there's no solar at the moment. Um, putting 270 milliamps. Let's turn all the main lights on. Um, oh, somebody's been playing with my switch panel. Let's turn main lights on, suction pump off. That's all right. So. With all the lights on, we're pulling about 400 milliamp. All right, that's at 24 volts. Okay, let's do the front one and um, see how that works. All right, we're in the front, I've got the lens off. And this one rattles and it probably explains why it doesn't work. The globe keep, kept falling out and this is a crazy little halogen. Oh, I don't know if I want that one in there. All right, let's find our LED. 
let's see if this one's wired up properly. I'm going to need two hands to get this globe in here and I can't do it with the camera, so hold on one moment. Alright, I've got my GoPro tripod slash selfie stick at full extension on the tripod, so I don't know how well this will work. Alright, um, still nothing on this one. Uh, right, so, um, what I might do is bring out, or actually, let's put the original globe in, see if we actually have power to it to start with. We don't, so we might need ignition keys. So we'll bring one of them out and we'll be right back. All right, we've got a known good working globe. Though it is 24 volt, it'll still tell us if we have power. Let's go ignition on. There we go. So this one is ignition controlled. Let's try one of these guys. See if the polarity is right. No. Okay. So the polarity is also backwards on that one. Lucas wiring. Can't even wire a light globe the right polarity. All right, I guess we'll be back after I modify this one. Okay, so we're back in the vehicle. I modified another globe, put a little bit of super glue on this, which is probably a smidgen wet, but feels like that's gone into the fitting well enough. And let's get some keys. The key over here in the ignition. Ah, beautiful. It's quite a bit brighter than the other ones, so let's put fitting back in here. We'll turn ourselves on. Right, we have functioning map light. Let's turn our main lights off. Uh, where are we? Right, yep, that's good enough to use as a map light whilst driving um, without distracting the driver. I can go back in the map slot. All right. Alright, so we're under the bonnet and we're going to do some fluid changes. We've got some power steering fluid and we've got some brake fluid, some dot, six, uh, dot 5.1. Um, so that we're just going to suck everything out of the reservoirs and replace fresh stuff in here. Um, partly because I'm lazy and partly because it just needs to be done. Power steering fluid will uh, flush itself through pretty quickly. Brake fluid and clutch fluid not so much, but we'll just change it a few times at short intervals and it should eventually refresh this stuff. So uh, I think we'll start with the power steering and we're going to suck that fluid out. Yep. This one. And that one is on tight. There we go. There we go. It's our little dipstick. I'll hold this one in here and you can do the hand action. Looks like it's fairly fresh stuff. Probably got enough vacuum there, you can just make sure it stays a good keeps a good seal. We're almost done. Get into the bottom of the reservoir here. So we can get it over the pickup. Alright, we need a funnel, so we're gonna make one out of a Coke bottle. Or not a Coke bottle, or an old water bottle. Hopefully it will not lose a finger in the process. Make sure we get all the moisture and everything out of this. So we don't want that in the steering fluid. Absolutely sure. All right, now that should help us pour it in. Now we only want to go about halfway to start, and we'll check the dipstick. We're 
about halfway, give it a sec. Let that settle, we'll get the dipstick and we'll check that. Alright. We'll check the dipstick. Drop this guy in. So we are about halfway, so we need just a, we need a little bit more, not too much. Reservoir. These ones are, this is very rusty. I don't want to get any of this rust particles actually in the reservoir. I might try and brush some of them off before I lift the lid. All right. And we are down on brake fluid a little bit, so I'm glad we did, we're checking this. All right, we'll suck the old brake fluid out and we'll put the new stuff in. Not much by way of sediment in there. All right. Get all the rest of this one. Put it in. Fill these guys up about halfway. Normally I'd say don't get this on the paint, but this is chemical agent resistant stuff. So we'll fill it up to about the, there's a hole between the two reservoirs here to allow them to drain between them. So we're going to let that um, sit at that hole because that's about the correct level for it. Alright, so we're going to pop that guy in there. Alright, that's the brake fluid. Now we're going to do the clutch. Alright, so first problem with the clutch is getting the top off it. So, just been on fairly loose apparently. How did you forget my strength? <laughs> Alright, now we're going to get this in. So, how about you hold the line and I'll do this bit if you like. You just want to try and I'll hold this. You hold the hose, and I'll do this bit. Get it on my knee here. That's okay. All right. Cool. That's good. All right. Now we'll whack a bit of brake fluid in there. Now we won't use that because we'll get hydraulic fluid in with the brake fluid. Which are actually pretty much the same thing, but just get in the way. Fill that guy up. All right. Flatly. Put that lid back on. Oh. There we go. Yeah, we've got. The rubber boot's still intact. Probably need to put a screw back in there at some point. Alright, now we've got a rattling air filter cover. Which means we need to find a washer for that, which I think I've got some spare ones. So, I think we'll take this off to start with. And we'll go and find a washer and put one on there. We'll just inspect the state of the air filter. Alright, come on. There we go. Ah, so that's actually been over tightened and damaged. That's half the problem. So that's why that's rattling loose. Um, that could be hard to fix. There's a lot of dirt in that air filter. I reckon I've probably got a clean up second hand filter off the 4x4. Might go in here. So we'll get this guy out and have a look. All right, let's have a look here. Get up. All right. All right, so we have old filter out. Old filter is very dusty, probably from the last desert run it did. Um, yeah, it's a Donaldson P900 433, we already knew that. Um, this is a 2002 filter. So, uh, 
Now the safety filter looks perfect and it's from 2000 so I wouldn't expect that to be too much of a problem. I might put that back in. Now I have the last two that I changed from my four-wheel drive, my 4x4 Parenti um, and it's uh, I changed these even though they didn't need to be changed just because I like doing it and these still look a damn sight cleaner than what was in the other one. Now there's a bit of junk in the middle of this one um, and uh, this one I obviously did a river crossing with at some point and it was new in 2012 but it still looks very clean but it's dirtier than that one so I reckon if I can get the junk out of the middle of that the safety filter should take care of the rest and we have another actually this is a brand new safety filter I didn't end up using I think um, and that's November 2008 so that actually would have been the old one I had in here and it's got a bit of grease and mark on here so um, I think we'll leave that one out so I think the consensus is we might give this one a, a brush up make it look a little cleaner and get the spider webs out of the middle all right we've got the old filter we've given it a clean out and a brush out with the air compressor and we're gonna put the uh, nice clean original safety filter back in um, it looks pretty good it's certainly better than the other one anyway um, so we'll put that in and these have over on the end of the air filter assembly here they have a little indicator um, pressure sensor and that pops up when the filter needs to be changed so this is probably quite fine it was changed after about probably six months of use and that was mostly on road so it's a whole lot cleaner than the other one so we're gonna put that one back in all right so that's fluids replaced in here and air filter swapped out for a slightly better one um, yeah this end cap is definitely knackered I'm gonna find another one of them or at least a different wing nut that I can put on the end there um, that fits the thread because that's an aluminium one I think or a zinc one and it's just stripped out the thread itself is steel that'll be good um, there's still some mystery wiring happening here we're gonna look at um, now crucially with a brake fluid I have gone dot 5.1 you can go up in fluid grades not down when you do what I'm doing uh, my hope is that over time that will drag some of the moisture out of the existing fluid in there but eventually we will drain and bleed all the brakes um, that won't be a huge issue uh, next thing we're gonna do is probably fuel filter and this has a manual lift pump down here so we can do that we can crack this nut here um, now there is a filter in one of these banjo bolts I've forgotten which one I think maybe this guy um, but I'm probably not going to check that there are two fuel sedimenters underneath that I've got to check at some point too don't know if we'll be doing that today um, we've also got three differentials fluid to check and we've got gearbox and engine oil to do so uh, but we're just doing what we can do today anyway um, let's move on to the next thing uh, we may do this I don't know I'll have a bit of a think off camera and then when we come back we'll be on the next thing that we've chosen to do all right so the wind has picked up and um, we were going to do the fuel filter but we had left this open and something happened <laughs> the wind blew and the pop rivets fell off so uh, we probably need to do something about this relatively soon so there's pop rivets through fiberglass here and uh, my pop rivet gun is MIA as are my aluminium pop rivets so we might end up drilling these out and putting self-tapping screws in here if there's enough room in the hinge way which there might not be looking at that so we'll do a bit of thinking about this and um, see what we can find if I can get this back in situ but yeah we're gonna have to do something about that anyway um, that's our next job let's go find my tools all right, so I came back to um, check on it and it had fallen off completely. So I guess we're gonna take a three mil drill bit and uh, we're gonna drill out these rivets and see what we can do. And uh, I could simulate doing this one-handed, but uh, probably not a good idea. I'm gonna do this bit off camera. So something that happens to me that is specific to three mil drill bits, they snap off. And it snapped off in the middle hole here. I got no hope of getting that out. Um, that's just going to have to stay there. So, yep, I've got all the others out fairly well. So, I guess we'll be drilling the rivets out of that one with a bigger drill bit. Yay. 
I'm going to start off and try these little uh, 8 by 18 by 20 mil. These are self drilling screws. Um, if they don't work, I might try the uh, chipboard screws. Let's see how we go. I'm going to put one in at the top first. In fact, now that I've got the door off, I might just drop one in here and see if the hinge will actually close appropriately with that head in there. Um, if I can even get that screw through there. So let's close this hinge all the way around. We'll have a look. I think there will be enough room for these heads just. Probably just. So I'll give these a shot and see how we go. All right, so the self drillers did the job and they actually clear quite nicely once it's closed. Um, we're missing one in the middle, but that's on far sturdier than it was before. So, all right, that job is done. All right, we're going to do the fuel filter next. Um, and we need to find out how tight this is on. Very tight, so I think I'm going to need my uh, filter tongs. So I'm going to grab those guys and we'll rip this guy off. All right, we're going to check the Donaldson filter we're about to put on. It has an arrow showing the direction to tighten. So we're going to turn this one backwards. It can get a bit confusing with filters when they're upside down. But um, I found a nylock nut um, to put on the back of this. So that should be good for our filter. I think the smallest setting is good for these guys. So we'll try and rip this guy off. And I'll get a different set of hands over this side to do that filter. So, been changed in a while. Maybe I can lend some extra hand strength here. And we'll get this one started. How do you hold it started? Oh. There we go. Got to just a bit crush it to do that. All right. <laughs> I'll grab the camera. Almost here, getting this guy out. This can be a bit of an operation. Yep. Right, we'll do. I'll give a bit more of a hand here. If you, if you want to hold the camera. We'll get this guy off. There we go, now we're loose. All right. Get my hand under, I'm gonna get diesel everywhere. Yeah, we had it. There's no room to get this guy out. Oh, having the turbo certainly cramps things a bit. So we're full of diesel there. But that's not the end of the world. Because I'm going to use that to prime the new filter. <laughs> not always recommended, but saves us about 10 minutes of pumping the, the lift pump. Alright. Go back on here. The arrows on the filters are very handy. Now, don't need to do this up too tight, but we'll see how we go. Because you don't want to strip the thread on the filter, that's bad. And don't worry about me messing up the paint on the filter, this is going to get replaced again after another 5,000 Ks. Um, when we do the next oil change. All right, now we've got to get down to the lift pump, uh, which is right down the bottom here. We're going to unscrew the top, which the fuel line is in a slightly different place in this one than my 4x4, so this is going to be a problem to get to. Almost. We should feel the pump pop up in a minute. Let's undo the screw. This is a plastic one. I don't like these ones, they break. Oh. Keep going, it'll pop up eventually. It's just a very fine thread. Right, there we go. So our lift pump has popped up. I'm gonna get in here. There we go, we've got a bit of prime. I'll find my 17 mil, flip it back that way. And we're gonna pump until we get fuel coming out the top of that nut and bolt right here. There we go. 
And I keep pumping while I tighten this up so I don't lose prime. And it's got to go up reasonably firm but not so firm that you bust it off. Right now comes the tricky two-handed bit. I have to hold the top of the lift pump down while I screw it in for the first few threads and I'll get diesel in my armpit from the other filter. All right. Almost there. All right, fuel filter's done. Okay. Now there's plenty more fluids to change, but uh, probably not today. We're gonna do a bit more later. Um, in other words, another day. So we'll call this quits for video and we'll see you in the next one. Go back.